Sorry I was away, guys. Uh, I'm back now. Uh, trying to get free time to do stuff. I've been writing different videos that I like to do. I've been watching and reading stuff I want to talk about. So, that said, here I am, long at last, with the long, long promised and finally delivered upon Fisherman Review by John Langan. Uh, what can I say about this? There's... Oh my god. Like, this novel is addicting. Like, it's so easy to read, but it's hard to sum up. It's hard to talk about. Like, uh, even when I was kind of writing some notes on this video, I didn't really know where to start. Because <laughs> it's kind of, it's, it's a lot of different things. It's not, it's not just a pigeonholed horror novel. I mean, it's horror, it's philosophic existentialist fiction, it's part historical novel, it's dark fantasy, uh, it's, it's a mystery story in some ways. Uh, all kind of rolled into one. It's very literary while still drawing on, you know, genre fiction. And it has a lot of, like, genre horror mixed in with literary writing. Uh, it's very, <laughs> it's very dense. There's a lot of depth in here. Uh, you know, it's, it's, there's not many novels I can think of that combine uh, characters kind of waxing philosophic about you know, the horrors of facing grief and loneliness and uh, the fleeting nature of life, coupled with uh, incredibly scary scenes of a reanimated corpse trying to kidnap children. <laughs> like, like, it goes it goes from one to the other in a very natural and graceful way. There's things in here that in the hands of a lesser writer, this whole thing would just be a shit show. Like, like... Langan is a master storyteller. He knows how to combine these kind of disparate, like, threads and kind of naturally and gracefully ties them together. It doesn't feel, uh, there's no tone whiplash here. There's no clumsy execution of scene to scene. Uh, it's all very graceful. It's very poetic. Um, uh, it's very, very literally, literary, literary. I can't speak. <laughs> it's very literary. Um, even when he's talking about something that would be at home in a, like, traditional horror novel, he talks about it in a very, like, mature, kind of somber way. He, he talks about it in these kind of, like, literary, uh, tones. Um, he, he's definitely somebody I would consider a writer's writer. Um, but that doesn't make him any less, less, uh, reader-friendly. Uh, he's someone both readers can flock to and love their work. And writers can read with appreciation for his mastery of the craft. Uh, there's just so much going on. It draws from a lot of different literary uh, influences, too. It draws on everything from Melville to, like, Southern writers. Uh, like, kind of reading this, I kind of got impressions of, like, you know, a metaphysical retelling of Moby Dick in some ways. Uh, it kind of reminded me of Deliverance. If Deliverance was a dark fantasy horror story. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Uh, it draws on, like, uh, traditional European folklore stories, like traditional folk tales, uh, for some of its influence. Like, it, it's, it, you know, it takes, it's kind of, it's kind of like Cowboy Bebop and, like, it's a grab bag of influences, but it knows how to take these influences and naturally integrate them into a new work that's completely original and whole and doesn't feel like it's just stringing together influences. Like, that's, I know that sounds uh, weird and very esoteric for people who don't know what I'm talking about, but it's uh, the best way I can describe this novel. Uh, uh, but it's also just pure atmosphere. Uh, it's so, it's full of dread, it's full of horror, there's a lot of scary stuff going on. I, I usually don't get scared. Like, when I read something, it doesn't affect me much. Uh, I'm just one of those people, I, it takes a lot to get me kind of creeped out. And this novel succeeded. And that's like one of the highest praises I can give a horror novel. It's actually scary. It's actually thought-provoking. It's actually mature. It's, you know, it's kind of everything you kind of want. <laughs> I can see kind of all kinds of readers appreciating this. Even people who don't normally read horror, like, could appreciate and like this novel. Um, it, it gets really out there and weird, but not so out there and weird people can't appreciate it. Uh, gets kind of, gets very dark, you know, but not so dark it's too depressing. Uh, it gets scary, but not so scary that you 
want to throw it away. You want you, you get engrossed in it. You keep wanting to read it. Uh, <laughs> so I it it just the more I think about it, the more I just realize kind of like what just a purely good storyteller Vangan is. And it's a shame that you know this novel is not popular. It's a shame no one's even heard of this novel. Uh, that's one of the reasons I wanted to talk about it. Uh, there's a lot of reasons I wanted to talk about this, um, particular novel, but that's one of them. Uh, it's a shame that writers like Langan aren't known and no one who they are. No, no one talks about them. They're not on bestseller lists. Uh, because if there was any justice in this world, uh, people like Langan and Brian Evanson and Paul Tremblay and Stephen, uh, Stephen Graham Jones would be on that list. <laughs> uh, so hopefully uh, these kind of revivalists of weird fiction or people doing the new weird thing or whatever you want to call it, hopefully they kind of, you know, will rise from the underground indie literary scene and take over the market. That would be amazing. Will it happen? Probably not, but that would be great. <laughs> so anyways, that's kind of just my general thoughts on The Fisherman. Uh, I just kind of want to talk about how great it was, kind of why it was great, and I just can't emphasize enough the atmosphere in it. It's really great. It's epic, it's intimate, it's dark, it's complex, and it's fantasy, it's horror, it's everything. It's great. <laughs> so read The Fisherman. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys next time. Bye.